All right, thank you, New York, and thank you all who are watching our show from all over the world. Now, consensus has been live for the last 14 hours, uh, starting from 8.30 a.m. In, in New York. And now, consensus is in Seoul. Uh, this is Wei Yun from Coindesk Korea, and it is 10.30 in the morning uh, in South Korea on 12th of May. 12th of May. All right, sitting next to me is Jaewon from Zengo. Uh, please, please say hi to everyone. Thank you again for joining here, and hi everyone, I'm Taewon from Zengo, <laughs> the crypto data disclosure platform supporting people to make smarter trading decisions based on the credible data. Uh, for about four hours and a half, we are to discuss the current status of crypto industry, especially in Asia, and the subject will be varied from technology to regulations, mass adoptions, etc. Sure. For starters, we'll be talking about one of the biggest issues in this industry, the CBDC, Central Bank uh, Digital Currency. And especially for the 15 minutes, we uh, will target on digital dollars and digital yen, whether they are competing against each other or whether they are collaborating uh, with each other or something else. And we are very much excited and honored to interview Chris Giancarlo, the former yeah. chairman of US CFTC, and Martin Korzempa from Peterson Institute for International Institute. It's a pleasure to help kick off uh, CoinDesk Korea's consensus uh, day today. Um, it's delighted to be here. I'm also, Peter? Excited, <coughs> also excited to be here and talk about China's central bank digital currency. Sure. Uh, so. Let's begin with Mr. Giancarlo. Um, please introduce what your digital dollar project in, is and its background. How can it be used in the uh, U.S. domestic economy and also especially in the uh, e international economy like us in Asia? So thank you for the question. Um, the digital dollar project is a uh, private sector initiative begun earlier this year uh, with several colleagues of mine they created a not-for-profit corporation, the Digital Dollar Foundation, and together we teamed up with the global um, uh, um, uh, consulting firm Accenture to create the Digital Dollar Project. Mm -hmm. And our purpose is to uh, become a think tank for um, uh, the development of ideas around the building of a U.S. CBDC, what we call the Digital Dollar. Okay. And all countries, or many countries, as you know, are working on CBDC projects of their own, and, and it, we believe a digital dollar will have some of elements, some elements that are similar to other countries, but also will have elements that are unique to the dollar, both the dollar's use uh, here in the United States, but also internationally as well. So the purpose of the digital dollar project is to really serve as a, as a jumping off point for development of U.S. thinking around the development of a central bank digital currency and to work with the official sector in formulating what the digital dollar would look like, what core values, what core concepts, uh, what design choices would be built in. It's our belief at the digital dollar project that we are that society is going through the second wave of the internet. The first wave was the internet of information. This wave is about the internet of things of value. And just as most things of value are accounted in a currency and, and in global commerce, many of them are accounted for in the dollar, as those things of value become digital, we believe it's essential for the, the major reserve currency to also become digital, to be programmable, to be tokenized, and to, to enter that realm of efficiency that comes with the digitization of things of value. Understood. Oh, and thank you, Ms. Uh, Mr. Giancarlo. You mentioned the second wave of the internet, right? Yes. Uh, and if compared with other existing competitors like credit cards or the cash, especially no. in retail purchases, uh, what kind of competitive advantages does digital dollar have as a second wave of internet? Sure. So in the physical world, if you go into a shop, you have the choice of paying for it in fiats or using a debit card or using a credit card. And a, and a, a wise consumer understands the ramifications of each of those different modalities of purchasing things. 
in a digital world, on, in online purchasing right now, you do not have the option of using f fiat currency. You can only use basically account-based system, credit cards or perhaps debit cards. A development of a central bank digital currency would also enable you to use digital fiat payments in online purchases. And you may not want to use that for every purchase, but with a known vendor, uh, uh, let's say uh, you w wish to make a purchase from a, a, a vendor that you have familiarity with and you may be very comfortable using a, a digital form of fiat. On the other hand, with a vendor that you're not familiar with, you may want to use a credit card and to enjoy some degree of purchase price protection. And you also may want the uh, credit, uh, the short term credit uh, that comes with the using that comes with use of a credit card. So we believe that a digital currency does not vitiate or, or do away with the need for credit cards. It serves as another option uh, in retail online payments. OK, thank you. Then what do you think of the China's uh, another CBDC plan, uh, which is called DCEP initiatives? They are, there are people who put emphasis on those geopolitical implications, but you have once introduced in an opinion that digital dollar is necessary even without uh, the Chinese, China's digital yuan. Besides, Ch uh, CBDC in two layers is quite similar to China's DCEP initiatives too. So what's your idea about it? Well, with me this morning is, is, is someone who's a much greater expert than I am in the new Chinese initiatives. And so he can perhaps give you a much more informed view on that. What I will say is we are not advocating for a U.S. digital dollar exclusively because other countries, including China, are developing CBDC. We're advocating for it for much more fundamental reasons than that. And that is the belief that we need to future-proof the dollar. We need to maximize the dollar's capability for a new digital era. If you consider currency, as I do, to be part of the, the basic architecture of an economy and of financial markets and of a financial system, then we need to modernize the dollar for a modern financial system, for a modern digital financial system. So this is about improving the dollar in its own right. It's about updating the architecture of the U.S. currency for a new digital era. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. I would like to ask to Mr. Kruzampa, could you please elaborate more? Like, why do you think the two countries are putting emphasis on CBDC when they already have well-organized and electronic payment system? So, uh, in China, I think uh, the, the main reasons are domestic, and, uh, and there are a few. The first is that China had a negative experience with the first few waves of uh, digital currency, of cryptocurrency and ICOs, where it was perceived as a kind of foreign imposed foreign threat that the PBOC had to, the, the China Central Bank had to figure out quickly how to respond to, where there were actually positive innovations, what part was speculative, and that they didn't want to have that might be causing capital flight, for example. So part of this research project for them, which has been going on for about six years, is to be themselves at the cutting edge and know where the interesting innovations are and apply them well, rather than having to respond to innovations that come from elsewhere. Now, another element of it is about control of the financial system. So we know that Alipay and WeChat Pay are now dominant retail payment providers in China. And it's actually difficult for financial regulators to get access to data from them on payments because of the low level of power that these companies have. So CBDC is one way if you made the underlying uh, settlement done in DCEP, it could potentially allow the central bank to get a lot more access to credit data, uh, and, sorry, to, uh, to payment data, and also to gain back some power from these companies. I think the international geopolitical side of it is a potential domestic selling point in China to maybe some of the more conservative hardliners, but I don't actually yet see a credible reason uh, that a digital renminbi at this point would help it internationalize. Renminbi is still not freely usable. That's the, probably the most important impediment to it becoming a reserve currency. And I've yet to see, uh, you know, much of this is about network effects. And since no other country has actually a fully functioning CBDC, there's not really a network to plug into at this point. So it's more of a, a distant consideration. 
All right, Martin. Uh, I remember reading your article uh, last July, I think, about a year ago, uh, regarding Libra. And I, uh, I remember you wrote, like, uh, China's technical um, disadvantages, uh, weaknesses, will be an opportunity for the U.S. trying to develop the uh, digital currency plan. So what, what do you think... Uh, you can say about um, merits, demerits, differences about digital dollar, Libra, and digital yuan. Can you compare all three of them? Yes. So uh, the point I was making about the disadvantages in, uh, of China is not so much technical. It's more that Chinese technology companies have this incredible market share in finance within their country, mm -hmm. but have very few uh, users for any element of their ecosystem outside of China. That's expanding a little bit, uh, but their main time that people use something like Alipay or WeChat Pay outside of the country is in, uh, is in tourism. So there is some element of cross-border involved there, but it's not necessarily going to be able to reach the kind of international scale cross-border scale that something like Libra could potentially have. Um, I think that a digital dollar would probably be the, the, by far the most attractive asset for people around the world just because it's so well known and con many countries have already adopted dollars and making them digital just makes a lot of sense. Uh, anything that the, that the PBOC comes out with as a digital yuan is going to have a lot of hurdles. The renminbi isn't used that much at the, at the moment. And I think there's still a lot of cons problems with uh, both transparency and uh, and with the fact that they have a closed capital account, so it's not freely usable. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you both for joining us for the first session in Coindesk Korea's consensus.